last part of the process to do model comparison using the Bayesian approach is to calculate the base factor. However, I've done the heavy lifting before, so now it is uh, quite easy to explain the base factor. It is just to explain a ratio between two quantities. So, we've seen the model of the null hypothesis in the Bayesian approach and the model of the alternative hypothesis in the Bayesian approach. These two models have some probability of the data. Probability of observing the B1 we calculated in our sample. This is this we have that element in both in both versions of the Bayes theorem. There will be different values. That's the, that's the difference. So basically we need to do a, now a ratio between the probability of the data if the null hypothesis is true, so if the model H1, the model of the alternative hypothesis, is true, how probable is the data? So we've got this value. And if the null hypothesis model is true, what's the probability of observing the data we observed? And that's given by that value. And we just obtain the ratio. So I've just given you an example. Uh, and, but before giving the example, where do this probability come from? I explained before. The probability of B1 in the null hypothesis model is that simple value there. Because the prior uh, in this um, null hypothesis model gave credence only to the value 0, so we cannot add any other value. That's the, the probability of observing 200 in this case and in the null hypothesis model. Now the probability of observing 200 in the alternative hypothesis model is the sum or integration of all these values and is given by this value. So we just need to do this value divided by this value and that's the base factor. These are not the numbers that correspond to that. I'm just uh, using um, uh, numbers for illustration. So let's say uh, the probability um, of observing uh, the data we observed in our sample for model of the now of the alternative hypothesis is 0 0.0032 and the probability of observing the data we observed in our sample under the model of the, alter the null hypothesis is 0 0.0002 so we calculate this ratio and that is 16 and that's our base factor and that's the end of the process now we are used to the traditional method that we come up with a p-value and after we calculate the p-value, we make a decision. We say whether we reject the null hypothesis, whether the result is significant or not. In Bayesian statistics, we do not do that. We just provide a quantity for the evidence in favor of one model relative to the other. So basically what we can say here that the data is 16 times more likely under the model of the alternative hypothesis than the model of the null hypothesis. And then what? Is this significant? We do not make a decision. 16 times more likely is 16 times more likely. Is that strong evidence, uh, weak evidence, anecdotal evidence? Well, some people, some even Bayesian um, people who follow the Bayesian approach, they like to put labels to that. They would say that a uh, uh, base factor between 1 and 3 is something, more than 3 is something, and so on and so forth. I do not like that because 
the, yeah, the beauty of using base, the Bayesian approach is that we do not use thresholds to make decisions. So using thresholds to say something about the magnitude of the, the evidence is not something I would uh, do. Now, what is 16 times more likely? Well, it's just that something is 16 times more likely than, than something else. It may be um, very strong in some uh, evidence in some cases and in other cases less strong. For example, if we need to, um, if we are if we are uh, testing a new drug or a new therapy, and we get a base factor of 16, uh, which means that the new therapy is uh, the model of the alternative hypothesis is 16 times more likely than the model of the null hypothesis of no effect. Then do we decide to use it to use the new therapy or not? Well, depends on how good is the previous, uh, the, the, the available therapies. So if the available therapies are really, really good, they are very good therapies, and perhaps 16 times more, more likely to be, to be effective than not, it's not a strong reason to abandon the old therapies. But if the old therapies are really bad or not very satisfactory, then a base factor of 16 or even much lower than that is a good reason to uh, decide to, to use the new therapy. So the decisions are not made by the researchers. Our job finishes when we provide the evidence for one model over the other. The decision to be made has to be done by politicians or citizens, but not the researcher. Now, in this case, the value is higher than one, and when the value is higher than one, that means that the model of the alternative hypothesis is more likely than the model of the null hypothesis. If the base factor value is exactly one, that means that both models have the same probability, or that the data is, uh, has the same probability under each model. Now, what happens when it's less than one? When it's less than one, that means that the model of the null hypothesis is more, is more likely than the model of the alternative hypothesis. Um, let's see an example. In this case, the model of the probability of the data under the model of the alternative hypothesis is lower than that for the null hypothesis. So 0 0.0032 is the probability of the data under the alternative model and 0 0.0128 is the probability of the data under the model of the null hypothesis. That is 0 0.25. And um, how do we communicate this? Well, it's a bit complicated. We have to say that the model of the uh, alternative hypothesis is 0 0.25 times uh, as likely as the model of the null hypothesis, which, which is a bit of a mouthful. So when we have uh, values lower than one, the best we can do is to revert um, the base factor. So instead of calculating base factor 1, 0, we calculate base factor 0, 1, which is just to put the probability of the data under the null on top and the probability of the data under the alternative on bottom. And when we do 0 0.0128 divided by 0 0.0032, that equals 4. So we can say that the model of the null hypothesis is four times more likely than the model of the alternative hypothesis. Now, mathematically, we can we don't need to do this. We can do just one divided by base factor one zero, and that is 
also for 